Is the son's infertility the mother's punishment or the family's karma? It's the latter rather than the former. If the mother were to be punished, she would probably be punished in a slightly different way. It's a question of the power of the bloodline. It's a question of the egregorial structure of the kin. The energy information space and the egregore of the family consider that men and women have slightly different functions. Women have a saving function, while men have an expanding, spreading function. In this case, a man spreads his seed, the energy informational potential of his lineage. That is, in this way, if a man is strong, a bloodline has an opportunity to take more roots, to capture a larger volume of territory, a larger volume of space. Roughly speaking, to produce more children, which would allow one to have a larger volume of territory, a larger volume of space, which is always beneficial to a bloodline. A woman keeps information, a woman stores the informational component of a bloodline, which is knowledge for the sake of what a bloodline needs, for the sake of what it exists for, what is the main dominant purpose of a bloodline as an egregorial system. When infertility affects a woman, it indicates that this information, from the point of view of her bloodline or the whole space of reality in which she as a representative of the lineage exists, this information is not needed. It is dangerous, it is harmful, it is useless it is unimportant. Accordingly, when a man is affected by infertility, then the space of reality, the egregorial system as a whole, or some part of it, or perhaps a bloodline itself, considers that expansion is not necessary. This could be the result of some kind of hereditary condition that doesn't give the diseased branch the right to reproduce. Or it could be the result of some kind of energy informational damage, like some kind of generic curse imposed on the whole family, or some particular branch. As for your story, colleague Natalia, it's impossible to be definitive. To get to the root cause, you need to have a complete picture of your family tree and its history. In this regard, I refer you to my book, The Power of the Bloodline, and to the corresponding seminar, which does not require any additional training or the ability to work with meditative practices. All you need is the ability to reason, to analyze, to compare facts, and of course, the great desire not to lie to yourself. Because there is such a human peculiarity as the tendency to self-deception, namely, the unwillingness to know about one's family, nothing that would cause not a feeling of pride, but on the contrary, a feeling of shame and disgust. We don't really like that kind of information, do we? But if you want to figure out the intricacies of your bloodlines and family branches, you have to get rid of those feelings first. You have to be patient, diligent, and willing to spend time and probably some additional resources, because sometimes the request for such information can be very costly. And you must take this issue seriously for more than five minutes and maybe devote some serious amount of your life to it if you are interested in the result. And here is the opposite question on a similar topic from Julia. Hello. I have been married for eight years and always thought that it was very important for me to have a family and children. I found the right husband for me, but we still don't have children. In one of your videos on YouTube, why we need to develop our consciousness, I heard the phrase that if you cannot do anything, at least give birth to a child. What if you can't do that either? Well, the first part of the answer to your question, I have already given. You need to find out the reasons why it happens in the female line of your family. 
to find some information that should not be passed on either by male or female descendants. You must have something in your blood in this informational system, something that cannot be spread any further. That's one possibility. The second possibility is that you're asking the wrong question. Are you sure you can't do anything but give birth to a child? Are you sure you've tried everything? Maybe you need to look at your destiny a little differently and see what it wants from you. Maybe it doesn't want you to have children. If your kin needs children, and not just to fulfill a physiological function, you always have the option of filling your home with the laughter of children in other ways, and giving a family to a child who has been denied the opportunity to have one from the beginning. But perhaps the reason lies elsewhere. It seems to me that self-deprecation and self-humiliation are bad companions for solving any difficulties in life. Try to look at your life and your destiny from a broader perspective and try to see what your destiny wants from you. Взгляда и попытаться увидеть, что же все-таки ваша судьба от вас хочет.